The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us for today's webinar. Uh, my name is Rocio. I am with SAGME. Um, today we have the pleasure of having Charity Gibson, founder and CEO from Green Banana Pro, uh, Social, as a presenter. Um, Charity, thank you for joining us. Um, if you guys have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to type them out during the, uh, in the question panel. We will address all questions towards the end of the webinar. Um, thank you again for joining us. Charity, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, hey, everybody, thank you so much for being on this webinar today. And also a huge thank you to SAGME for having me on and for all of your support. Super excited to be here um, and talk to all of you guys about something that I think we should all probably know and do, but for uh, whatever reason, we don't. So um, before we get started, I want to tell you all a little bit about me. I always tell the story, so if you've heard it, uh, you'll get to kind of hear it again. I have spent 15 years as a distributor, um, first working for another company, and then in 2010, I opened up my own company. Um, called Green Banana Promos, and we'll get into that a little bit um, more in the next little bit. Uh, two years ago, I moved away from being a distributor and wanted to move into doing something I really love, which is helping people in the industry tell their story through social media. So that is how Green Banana Social came to be, and so I currently consult with a couple of suppliers in the industry on content and strategy, and I picked up Next Products as one of my clients um, back uh, two Januarys ago, and they asked me to come on board as their West Coast rep. So I'm in a very unique position in that I can help distributors um, as a supplier rep with a unique uh, positioning there. And so in addition to you know playing on Facebook and telling people about Bad Reels and Shelby Tumblers, I also am the editor and social media director for Promo Kitchen, so seamless shameless self-promotion here. If you're not familiar with Promo Kitchen, jump to promokitchen.org. Um, it's basically a band of 21 Mary Misfits, and we've come together to volunteer our time with the hopes of making the industry bigger, badder, and even more awesome through the uh, production of disruptive content and then providing mentorship and education uh, for anybody, actually. It's uh, completely free. And we also encourage uh, collaboration through engagement. So follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Um, definitely feel free to read the content, engage, leave comments, and if you have something that you want to write or tell us about, let me know, and um, we can get that on there, too. I think everybody has some really unique experiences and a huge big voice and something to say, and we want to help you say it. We're also looking for mentors and mentees right now, so if you jump on promokitchen.org, you can sign up for that right off of that front page. So enough about that. Um, I want to get on with the show, and now that you know kind of who I am a little bit, I want to preface this uh, rest of the session by just letting you guys know that this is not a black and white session of do this and do that and this is how you'll win. This session uses unique case studies and success stories of different companies in the industry um, basically to get you ideating and kind of thinking beyond the boring self-promo and kind of help you figure out what products are best for you and your brand. And so there are some unique things that we're going to talk about. But again, it's not black and white. I'm not going to tell you how to write the PO or which factories to go to, but I am going to tell you how to get to the point where you'll know how to do that. So let's get on with it. Uh, so why should we use promo to sell promo? I'm pretty sure we've all seen this infographic, right? So this is the one we kind of force feed all of our clients to try and help them understand just how much what we do matters. Um, so just kind of looking at this, why should we use promo to sell promo? Well, we tell our clients that promotional products work. So in the best world that we're in, we should be putting these things to the test and show our clients our own results. We should be our own best case study for using promotional products. We don't say that um, cold calling is the best way to promote your business or that email marketing is the best way to promote your business. We run around town proclaiming that promotional products are the best way to sell anything, and by golly, we should be using them to sell promotional products ourselves. So I want to rewind a little bit to um, six years ago, and I'm sitting with my business mentor strategizing on how to get more business coming through the door for Green Banana Promos. Um, and so two sentences completely changed the game for me. He looked straight at me and said, Charity, you know, you realize that you are doing all of these things, going to these networking meetings and using social media, 
making these phone calls and knocking on doors, and you're trying to tell the world that promotional products are the best way to advertise their business, why are you not using promotional products to help you advertise that you sell them yourself? And so, um, yeah, I was. I was using social media, going to networking mixers. I was giving that 30-second elevator pitch, and I'd leave behind some really rad business cards and maybe a pen, um, but I wasn't really using promotional products to sell promotional products, not really. Um, so I want to share this slide with you. This is a quote from one of my good friends at Fairware. Her name is Denise Tashiro. You may or may not have heard of her, but she's one of my industry idols. And uh, she sent me this the other day. I love that you're doing a session on self-promo. We really dug into that this year for the first time, and it's been a big win for us. I'm kicking myself that I didn't take it more seriously or strategically sooner. So this is a huge thing. If you're not familiar with Denise, um, she does um, promotional products for some of the major eco-friendly brands and um, earth-friendly brands in the, the world. So Aveda, different things like that. And they had obviously built a big name for themselves, but they have a very unique story to tell. And she was just kind of using any eco-friendly product they could find and really didn't have a huge strategy or a budget for it. And this year she went full bore into this and did some really cool things with her own self-promo. So I'm going to get into some pictures later and show you exactly what she did. So she started into her company in 2005, and so um, I love that she says for the first time she started using this, and it's been a really big win. So what does using promo to sell promo look like? Um, <laughs> this is one of my favorite slides, and there's a story behind it, but it kind of makes me laugh. Uh, so how do you do this? How do you find self-promo for your business? Do you, A, go on Facebook and in that um, crazy group ask which supplier has the best deal on self-promo? Or do you browse a few supplier sites and pick the least expensive item you can find? I'm going to tell you that the answer to this question is that A and B are both wrong. So um, I'm not going to say wrong. I'm just going to say you're not doing it right. Hopefully maybe that's a little bit more friendly. But there is a better, better way. Before you decide what products to buy for your company, you have to know who you are. This means personally and professionally. And I say that, why? Because there's one promotional product that you have that represents your brand and your business or the company that you work for, if it's not your own company, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, whether you know that this brand is representing you or not, and whether you like it or not. And that walking promotional product is you. That's your social media, um, every piece of clothing that you wear and buy, every store that you go into, every word that you speak, and every post that you make or comment on on social media. So if I ask you right now to you know, think of a specific person when I say a word, like for instance the word bacon or dog, um, you immediately have a person come to mind, even if like foodie, for example, I think of Josh Goodman from Lip Mark. Um, same thing if I say dog or animal lovers, social media, in order to pick the perfect promotional products to represent your brand before you can do anything, you need to figure out what your individual story is and then find, or even if you can't find them, create that can become a part of that story and more importantly, help the recipient become a part of your story too. So my um, one of my favorite sayings, and yeah, I made it up, so I'll take credit for the quote, but you can steal it and use your name on it too. If we can't do a great job of helping our own companies differentiate from our competition, then we have absolutely no business at all telling clients that we can help them differentiate them from theirs. So let that sink in for a minute. I'm going to say it one more time. We have one job. If we cannot do a great job of helping our own companies differentiate ourselves from our competition, then we have absolutely no business at all telling clients that we can help them differentiate from theirs. Does that make sense, I hope, to everybody? Uh, I wish you were here right now so I could see your faces and ask you questions. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Green Banana. So talking about stories and setting yourself apart and differentiating a little bit. Um, a little bit of history on my company. I grew up in the promo industry in a very regimented distributorship. We worked seven to four. We made 100 calls a day, and all of those calls were recorded. We took no supplier meetings. We didn't go to trade shows. We had no local clients. Um, he didn't want us out of the office at all because it was all a distraction. So when I started my own company, I really had no idea what to call it, but I knew I wanted something fun and something that was representative of my, um, just my brand and how I do things. Uh, one of my favorite things to say is, I know, I know, my 12-year-old is showing. And so there's just that 
um, inherent need I think that we all have to play and I wanted to capitalize on that. To further cement all of that, there's a book. I would love you guys to go find it and read it. It's a really short read. It's called Fish. And inside that book, there's four principles in the book. Um, after I read the book, I immediately was like, that's my life. I said that out loud. And said, so the four principles are be there, make their day, choose your attitude, and play. So when thinking of names, um, you know, I just was going through things, and uh, my husband at the time was like, well, what about insight promotion? I thought, yeah, yeah, no, that gets me so excited. I just want to go out and brand something. Um, not really. So I just kind of was waiting and trying to figure out what the heck I was going to call my company, and I buy my bananas while they're green. They sit on the counter, and um, I try to eat them actually before they turn yellow because they think they're too sweet when they're yellow. And they were sitting on the counter, and I just saw them, and I thought to myself, green bananas. Uh oh, green banana, what a cute name, and immediately I saw the logo in my head and a monkey swinging, and I just was like super excited to have this kind of fun name for my company. Um, so I went ahead and branded off of that, and kind of just again capitalized on my desire to play and to make people laugh, and the goal that I have of lifting up spirits and spreading sunshine, I saw that somewhere, and that's what I really wanted for my company. So then it became a matter of figuring out who I wanted to work with. And um, we found on the slide here the flying monkey while we were at one of the trade shows. And I saw it. I heard this like screaming thing, saw it up in the air at a trade show. And I just decided I had to have this monkey. And it's not completely on brand because he's the wrong color, but he's super fun. And so we would go through and just make these little memes, the uh, how to be a rock star number 74, fling it like you stole it, but of course don't steal anything because ever, and uh, stealing is bad and it makes people sad. And then just working with you know uh, different people that get it, everything was branded in our company. So it was down to, you can see even my stamps had branding um, right there. The envelope says caution, this envelope contains massive amounts of awesome inside, open at your own risk. So just something that was really indicative of me and um, you know the things that I wanted to represent. You can see here that Fling Monkey just became kind of a way of life, a little bit of an icon and a glorified flat Stanley project. And we branded everything from head to toe, completely sold out to our brand. You can see up in that top right picture that was me and all the girls from my company walking through Expo a couple of years ago, and our shirts had Love Green, and on, on the back it was Green Banana Promos. And as we're walking through Expo, people were saying, we love green too. They didn't even know what green was, but they already loved us. So I figure mission accomplished, right? Um, so all kinds of things. When it came to getting these promos into the hands of people, we didn't just send a boring white envelope. We actually put Max in a very, Max is the monkey, by the way, we put him in a clear box. We wrapped everything else inside that box um, in green tissue paper so nobody could see it. And we had Max on the outside like he was trapped behind clear glass with a little speech bubble that said, please open this box and let me out. And so he just became one of those, um, again, iconic, kind of glorified that flat Stanley projects. And uh, people got to know Max really quickly. On top of that, there's bananas at grocery stores. And people would send me pictures on my cell phone all day long when they'd walk into grocery stores and see these green bananas. So um, that was huge. Picking out products that we liked, that people would like, um, that were fun, and that just were super memorable. And then on top of that, we also picked out products that represented our values. So um, one thing that's really important to me, and I don't know you know, if it's important to you, but I'm sure that you do have things that you are passionate about. Uh, we worked with companies like Solar Advertising, who at one point in time donated 1% of all of their sales to water.org to build water wells in third world countries. And um, oftentimes, Green Banana donated products and also money, uh, financial donations to organizations that either help the homeless or um, I actually grew up homeless, so that's pretty um, near and dear to me. Or that would fight human trafficking and fight for fair wages and rescue you know, people out of Cambodia and different things like that. Rafa House and um, World Hope International are two of the organizations we work closely with. And so um, really, you know, and those things, again, it's going to be different organizations for you. You're going to value different things. You're going to help um, you know, or tell your story through the use of different suppliers that represent the values that you have. But 
what I'll tell you is when those supplier reps come to visit you, ask them about more than what their products are because a lot of suppliers sell the same products, but the way that they're sourced, are they sourced ethically? Is that a big thing for you? Do you even care? You know, are you going to be just a commodity guy? And that's okay. There's a room in this industry for everybody, but figure out what really represents you and your story and then you can figure out which suppliers to work with and which products to use to help you tell this story. So basically the goal obviously is about forming um, what I like to call a neuro association with like-minded individuals that share your passion, passions um, and so that's what it means to be top of mind. So if you didn't you know, know that word, no, neuro association, it's, you know, if you do it right, it's a positive neuro association. So as Unmarketing says, your logo is not your brand. Your brand is what people feel when they see your logo. So what are people feeling when they see your logo and which products are they seeing that on? Did you pick a cheap pen that broke in their pocket and now they're associating your brand that you love and care deeply about that supports your family with a broken pen that just ruined their Louis Vuitton purse or their nice pair of pants? Um, really take the time to think about that and what you stand for from the uh, quality of your product to the product itself to how it's sourced. Uh, where it come from, comes from and what the companies are doing with the funds that they procure by selling to you. So enough talk about Green Banana. Um, I want to talk about some other companies that are doing it right. Hopefully that helps you kind of get an idea of where I come from and what I stand for. Um, but another company, oh, I guess this is another slide before I go forward. Again, talking about how this became a flat Stanley project. I only actually ever purchased 96 of these fling monkeys and I would bring one or two with me everywhere I went. So they became a pretty hot commodity. Everybody was trying to figure out how they could get the monkey I brought with me. And the people that did get them were pretty coveted. It went to NASA um, at one point in time. You can see, um, where is he on here? There was one uh, restaurant in Tucson where if you brought your fling monkey you would get 20% off your monkey burger. And then you can see there from Tucson to Tuscany, Max knows Italy. So Max got to go on all these cool field trips. I wish they would have brought me along instead of my stuffed monkey. But I'm glad, you know, Max got to see some cool things. Um, so hopefully you can find something that really resonates with your audience. And it's um, something that, that, you know, it's easy to bring along. And they can take pictures and help be brand advocates and promote your brand for you as well. Again, this is part of making other people part of your story through the use of a promotional product, um, something tangible that people can take with them. And not, you know, just exclusively using social media or exclusively using, <laughs> exclusively using um, promotional products, but figuring out how to tie all of this together so that the digital world meets tangible product and goes back into the digital world and it's cyclical and, again, top of mind. Um, so, again, now let's really move forward. Case study, uh, 3, 3K consultants. If you haven't met Walter and Denise Kurt, these guys are awesome. They are in Houston, Texas, and sweetest people you have ever met in your life. They ended up with uh, this cute little kitty cat over here. I'm actually a dog person, but um, Mr. Boozy has made me like cats too. And uh, this is an adopted cat that came into their life kind of by accident. And um, just the whole world has fallen in love with him, and they decided to make Mr. Boozy their brand mascot, which is kind of cool. So they use a lot of full color. They play off of pop culture, obviously put the force back in your brand. And so just figuring out how they can use this really unique branding in a number of ways to help you know relate to the clients that they come across and also to help just tell their brand story. And um, if you're on their Facebook page, it's really cool just to be able to see this and watch it. And it just is, again, another way of really helping people stay, helping them stay really top of mind with the people that they want to do business with. So um, really cool there. I love just how they do things. It's just super cute, super fun. And it's just a, you know, a, a brand that is friendly and it makes you want to do business with them from a friend standpoint. So check them out for sure. And then back in the beginning of this, I had talked about Fairware. And so I'm uh, going to get a little bit more in-depth on the Fairware case study. So who Fairware is, they are a sustainable brand strategist company, and they use merchandise to tell their story. And so they launched, um, you can see there, with a the mission to change the world and the simple act of buying. So Denise actually got her start um, in a company and basically um, was trying to purchase promotional products for that company. And she couldn't. She couldn't really find anything that helps tell their story that, you know, was sourced um, in an earth-friendly way. And so her and the co-founder of her company, Sarah, 
founded Fairware as a way to solve a problem for other people that were in that industry as well. She actually worked for the Director of Sustainability for Canada's largest outdoor retailer, which is um, if they can't find promotional products to promote their business, and obviously there's a problem that totally needs solving. Um, and so they, they really wanted to be able to direct uh, source promotional products that reflected their social and environmental priorities and um, really wanted something that earth-friendly and ethically sourced. And so the first time um, in the past year, like I said, so they've been doing this for their clients for a number of years, obviously, but the, the last um, couple of years, uh, last year, sorry, they um, really got uh, direct, uh, directly involved in purchasing products for their specific company and really got intentional about how they were going to do this and what message they wanted to tell. So their story and the message on the products that they represent, the <laughs> message on the products that they have really represents who they are. They don't just slap a logo on a product. Um, their products actually tell what they do and then it also tells why they do it. So uh, here you can see that they're addressing a, set, a supply chain commitment to power, like power banks obviously is a huge thing. The thought of safety is a big deal, CPSI compliance, um, all of the electronic components in there, and people really want to be sure that their you know, power bank isn't going to blow up in their pocket or backpack or set a house on fire while they're sleeping. And so I love the message on here. So, sure, Fairware's logo is here um, on the product itself, but I love that it says, you know, you've got the power. And then the message that it sends is we do the homework so you don't have to. Also, um, I love the journal on the left. Uh, this particular journal, not only on the on the front cover does it say we're on the same page, but when you open that journal and read through it, um, there's blank pages, of course, for clients to write their own story and keep notes. But there's also a, a page uh, inserted in there that's custom that tells their story, lets people know that they're a certified B Corp, and lets people know exactly why they do what they do and who they do it for and how people can also uh, work with them so that they can help them tell their story too. So basically this journal, you know, we're on the same page, really quietly shouting, we get you. And I think that's so important. Sometimes we just slap logos on products. Um, again, it's whatever we can find, whatever's least expensive, and then we just put a logo on it and we call it a day and expect that to tell some, you know, story or give some sort of a message when really it's just, you know, basically shouting a brand name and doesn't really say anything about what the company is about. Um, these are some other products that uh, they have done for their customers as well as one of their other self promos. And um, I love so the uh, top left here. If your brand has a good story, uh, your if your brand has a good story, <laughs> so should your promotional merchandise. And so I love that. So that uh, cup that's shown up there in that uh, picture on the top left. It lets people know that 20 million trees are cut down in the process of manufacturing paper cups. And so that's a reusable ceramic cup. So just by simply using this cup as a, an individual that maybe is a recipient of it, you can feel really good about doing your part to reduce that um, carbon footprint and to reduce your impact on the environment. I think that's really cool. So you can just get a ceramic cup and put somebody's name on it. and in your own world know that, hey, you know, it's better to reuse this cup than it is to use a paper cup. But if, you know, by using this imprint uh, the way that they did to actually give a message and send a message instead of just simply putting a logo out there, it obviously makes it that much more powerful, that much more memorable, and it gives you that warm, feel-good feeling, fuzzy feeling about Fairware and about what they're setting out to do and using them, you know, you can feel comfortable using them as a company. Um, on the right-hand side here, you can see their companies that they work with um, obviously also share that commitment to leaving the earth better than you find it. And so super cool there. And then you've got the uh, recycled material uh, chairs there and some different products that they've done as well. So um, giving you guys some homework, these are some things I really would like for you to look at when you're talking about how to build self-promo and how to use promotional products to tell your individual story and how to use promo to sell more promo. Um, first, you have to figure out what your story is and you know what are you about. So go further than we provide creative brand solutions. Okay, well everybody does that. We provide excellent customer service. That should be a given. 
what is unique to you? Are you a woman-owned company? Um, like I said, mentioned earlier, I go homeless. Uh, I started my own company at a young age. Um, now I'm a single mom. You know, people don't necessarily know this. I don't know how I could tie that into a self promo, but you know, those are things that you need to write down. This list of you know things that make you relatable to the people that you want to have buy from you and in turn that you want to sell to, which means that you're working with these people every single day. So what message are you going to send that's going to resonate with the people that you would prefer to wake up each day and jump out of bed to do business with? Um, so that goes right into number two. What message do you want to send into the world and who should hear it? Um, this is super important, is picking out the demographic. You don't want everybody to buy from you, I promise you. I know it's really difficult to turn away orders. Um, you know, it's difficult to let people, you know, come to you and, and to have to tell them, hey, we might not be a good fit, but that's something that you're going to have to do if you want to be successful in your business. And before you can start turning people away, because you don't want to do that, is figuring out, again, who are the customers that you could work with that make you want to jump out of bed every single morning? Is it going to be in the technology industry, in the tech space? Um, do you want to work with, you know, is, is it a generational thing? Do you prefer to work with millennials um, or Gen Z? Super fun group of people to work with. Um, you know, do you want to work with some of the, uh, you know, older generations that prefer to, you know, work by telephone and might even still have a fax machine? If that's how you want to do business, there are people out there that want to do business just like you do. And it's important to figure out who you want to have hear your story and then figure out, obviously, um, I'm going to jump ahead to number four, how you're going to deliver that message because people are going to receive things differently. Along with that, number three, I think we talked about this a little bit, and I, I really would like you guys to you know, type this out or get a piece of paper and write this down and answer these questions because this is imperative to picking out. Before you write a PO for that you know, $50, um, 100 pieces of product X, don't even do that. Just answer these questions and keep your own brand top of mind, and then really take a minute to seek out products that are going to align with this. So number three, what suppliers share your brand values and have products that can help you accomplish sending your message out for the world to hear? And um, I think this is huge because oftentimes we're ordering self-promo, and your supplier partners are taking a hit on your self-promo orders. There's not a lot of profit for suppliers um, to begin with. I know there's probably a misconception out there that suppliers have really deep pockets and endless amounts of money, but that is not true. Um, you know, we're running about a 10 to 13% margin um, when everything is said and done, and distributors are sometimes two and three times that. So we want to make you successful. Suppliers really want to get out there and help you to be able to brand your business uh, as best you can, and obviously the intended goal is to be partners. And in order to do that, don't just pick, you know, products that you're going to get for the cheapest price at one supplier, and then you know go sell it somewhere else because it's less expensive to order for your client there. Pick supplier partners that um, share the same values that you have, that you know that are going to produce a quality product. Have them produce your self promo for you, and then you know, work as best you can to uh, give that business back to them. And because you've chosen a supplier that shares those same values, that, you know, has, you know, quick turnarounds, and maybe they're not the least expensive, but they have the best customer service, and if anything were going to happen to go wrong, because things do go wrong sometimes, um, you're going to know that they are going to make your brand look good um, regardless of when a particular problem happens. So figure that out. And then number four, how are you going to deliver your message? So you have this killer promo now. You've picked a flying monkey or a flying cow. Or um, I had somebody talk to me the other day, and they're um, parrot promotions. And I love that idea with the full color and you know all of the different plush that you can do or some different contour cut prints. I think that there's a lot that you can play on with that. Um, but now you know she's going to have all of this colorful, wonderful branding. And how are you going to get that out to people? And I think this is huge, and it's often overlooked. And it does cost a little bit extra to you know, put something in a clear envelope or in a shiny envelope or something other than just the plain cardboard box. But I'll tell you, if the product that you've selected is amazing and you're spending all of this time and making this investment to help you tell your story, 
through this product and through this brand messaging that you've selected and then you don't take the time to complete the circle by picking out packaging, you've essentially wasted all of your time and money. You want to make sure that people are going to get this, that they're going to be excited when they get it, that they're going to be thrilled to open the box because they want to see what the heck is inside this thing and you want them you know, to have what's in the box just as good as, be just as good as what's outside the box. Um, so if it's just in a print envelope, there's a chance they're not going to open it and you don't want to waste your time and money. You want to get that wow from them and you want them to be so impressed that they're posting it on social media and they're becoming a brand loyalist for you. So make sure that you um, take the time to think through your packaging. Are you going to hand deliver this? Are you going to put it in the mail? Um, are you going to have it delivered by singing Telegram? And I just realized, oh no, okay, that's not a spelling error. I'm thinking, oh man, I spelled something wrong, sorry. Um, <laughs> definitely human talking out loud, squirrel. Um, you know, so figure out what's going to make the biggest impact and how that message is going to be delivered and how you're going to follow up. So this is number five. How are you going to measure success of this promotion? Do you have a specific call to action included in this product? Have you um, maybe had a specific phone number that's uh, delegated so that people can call you back at this particular line and you can see you know, how many people have called off of it? Are you going to have an email or a drip campaign that ties into it that maybe has a survey or something um, along those lines? And then are you also going to reinforce your efforts on social media and through email campaigns, through photos and different things like that? Do you have a second product? You know, what kind of uh, promotional product are you going to send out? Um, or, you know, def definite follow-up method are you going to send out to make sure that people received this promotional product, that they heard the message that you wanted them to hear, and that they're also going to take action and do something with this information and tangible goods that they've received. So again, five questions that I just want you to, to be able to answer. Uh, what's your story? What's unique about you? What message do you want to send in the world? Which suppliers can you partner with? And this is a huge thing. I don't didn't get really too far into it, but make sure that you're using your supplier reps. When they come in, don't waste their time. Take their, um, their meetings and ask them difficult questions. It's not just about the products. Let them know exactly what you're trying to accomplish. Let them know who you want to have hear your message. And also let them know, you know, obviously the same thing for your clients. What clients are you working with? And what's going to be best for them, you know, to help tell their stories too. And then, again, packaging, work on that, how you're going to deliver your message, and have a very clear way that you have set out before you start doing all of this as to how you're going to measure success. Because as with um, any promotional product that we send out, it should not be an expense. It should be an investment. You should see a return. And that is the you know, biggest, biggest thing to me is we're here to use promo in our own lives to sell promo. We want to make sure that we are our company's best case study. And so, again, by doing this, then we will turn our clients into believers, and then we can use their case studies too. Before we go out and brand for anybody else, we need to brand for ourselves. And so I think that is it. If you guys have questions, let me know. Um, my email address is right there, greenbananacharity at gmail.com. You can also find me on Facebook. I do really good on one-to-one -one calls. Sometimes presentations get a little crazy, <laughs> and uh, uh, it's hard to not be able to interact with you guys, but I would love to have any questions that you have if you want to set up a call or talk about your specific companies and ideas that we can uh, generate together. Please let me know. I'm happy to do that anytime. Thank you, Charity. Um, you did wonderful. I think the presentation went well. Um, uh, we do have a couple of questions here. Um, uh, Michael Klaufman wants to know, um, have you used self promos to prospect for new clients? And also his other question is, what is your success rate? So we did actually, yes. So one of the, um, I'll tell you, there's a couple things that we've done. So the uh, promotional that we did in the clear box went out to 15 people. And that doesn't seem like a lot, but we have a very targeted list of people that we were working to um, convert. I actually wanted five of these clients because they were considered my top dogs, like my dream clients, and if I was to get those five, I was going to be happy as a bird. And so I sent out 15 packages, and uh, again, those were the um, clear boxes. They had Max the monkey on the outside, the stuffed plush with that uh, text dialog box. 
And then inside was some other things. Um, actually, sticky notes. I really am a huge fan of sticky notes. We had our lip balm that we had gotten from Solar with um, this really unique flavor. They have pomegranate pear, and people were trying to guess what the flavor was. We call it purple. Um, people still ask for it. Actually, somebody called me the other day, and they're like, do you have any left? I gave her my last 25 self promo from back in the day. I'm like, here, have them all. And so, um, yeah, we did send those out. And I actually not only got those five clients out of the 15, I got an additional five. So I was pretty happy with that. So about 66%-ish uh, came to us. We did get calls from the um, other five, and we have relationships had relationships with them talking back and forth, but they had a vendor relationship they just couldn't get out of and were very happy with what they were doing. And I told them I was really happy to be their backup if anything ever happened or something fell through. Um, those lines of communication were open. So yeah, super successful as far as that's concerned. And then we did some other things on smaller scales um, as well, and that was just general mailings that we had done. And uh, one of my favorite self-promo, uh, self-promotions actually wasn't a promotion uh, necessarily as far as like a marketing campaign that we sent out to prospect to new clients, but it was a, um, hey, we really screwed up marketing campaign. And so we branded um, these little notes and it said we dropped the ball and it was a red rubber ball bouncing away and we actually printed up red rubber ball. And so um, accidents happen, you know, mistakes are made. We had one order for State Farm. It had to be red. It was a red with a white imprint, a little compact mirror thing that they wanted, um, along with some other things that they put in a package. We did everything right. We sent the virtual. Everything was proofed. Everything said red, 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 red. The day before their event, it shows up, and it's blue with a white imprint. And those are just things, you know, in our industry, everybody has those stories, right? And there's nothing really that you can do. Um, you know, even the best of the best of the best have things like that that happen, and the only thing that you can do is recover from it. And so... Um, that proactively knowing that we are going to have problems and um, being preemptive and then also being transparent and apologetic and also adding some humor in, in it as well. Um, we would send those out with a coupon for, you know, whatever it was or a, you know, a free setup or anything, whatever it was um, in proportion to how big our flub was. And people really liked it. They were really um, happy to give us some grace and I think it really humanized us. And so I would actually say that's probably one of the very most successful self-promotion campaigns that we did um, just because it, again, it brought humanness to that brand and it helps people relate to us. Like, hey, everybody makes mistakes and I'm glad that you could just suck up, you know, suck it up and, and own up to the fact that you're not perfect and thanks for, you know, even though you couldn't, you know, transact perfectly and there was some friction, at least you came back and you made it right. So that was... Um, probably one of the, the best campaigns we ever did. Thank you, Charity. Um, we don't have any further questions. I just wanted to let everyone know that this session has been recorded. Um, it will be on our YouTube channel tomorrow. Um, you do have Charity's email address, but you can also email me if you want to get in touch with her. Um, please uh, also check our website, sagni.org, for any upcoming events that we have. Um, we look forward to um, our next webinar, which is April 25th, I want to say, and 27th. Um, <clears throat> we'll have Andy Evans from SAGE um, on that webinar. Charity, again. Um, oh, one more question, Charity. Um, actually, no, just uh, really enjoyed this webinar. Uh, Charity is inspiring, and that was from Lydia Cario. I can't pronounce her last name, but that was from Lydia. Um, thank again, you everyone, very thank much. you so much for joining us. Um, thank you, Charity, for for saying for presenting for us today, and we wish everyone thank a you happy guys. afternoon. You know, have a great Bye. day. Happy National Puppy Day. <laughs> oh yes, happy National Puppy Day. <laughs> That's good. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.